Fences up, fences up, fences down. Tracks over here. Look at this, it's just bubbling there. Look, just yummy. And if they thought that they're going the wrong direction and they went in there. Oh my gads. Oh. Dude, watch that thing. So whatever's in there, just it just eats the line and the ball. <laughs> Look, see, it's so nasty, it's not even gonna read. It says it's 142 feet. The sonar ball is not working in there. It's so thick. He said that he literally had to go up on the median at one point because my grandparents were so close to them. And he came up to like a stop sign and looked over and he said it was a white haired old, old lady and an old man next to him. And he said, no, it was the vehicle that we're describing. And he said that there was a big, a big scratch on the front fender, which there is. The license plate was number 1030, but he didn't know what, notice what state it was. So this very well could be right. They're driving a Chrysler Pacifica 2007 license plate 1030. He was a veteran for 21 years. He was a, a, a CB. He served in Korea and he served in Vietnam. And Levada and, and he were married at 25 and 27 years old. 64, 65 years they've been married. So I mean, they have they know each other like, you know, this is a tight couple. Great job taking care of their kids and, and they're just wonderful grandparents too. Levada has issues with her eyesight at night and uh, Robert is, is suffering from uh, dementia. So those are the things that, you know, start to really make us think about what was going on. continues as the Nebraska State Patrol and other federal agencies work together to find Bob and Levita Proctor of Aurora. Um, we just try to remain hopeful and keep pushing forward. Bill and I are up early. I can, it doesn't even focus on him, but today is day number seven. We have over 53 ponds today that we need to go do. Our camera guy is still sleeping. We're going to start the RV up right now, and uh, we're just going to start driving until he wakes up. We'll grab some breakfast a little bit later on, but today's going to be another long day, and we'll bring you into more of the story in just a few minutes. It looks like our uh, camera guy was just as anxious as we were to get up this morning. So we've only checked one location so far. But I'm just going to bring you into the map and the coordinates and the what we're thinking on day seven here. If you've not seen the first six days of us searching as well as a live stream 
all of the links are going to be in the description down below. But as we come into this looking for Levada and Robert, we have covered miles. We're talking almost 2,000 miles that we've covered. You know, the thing that we've always been so focused on is this right here was ground zero. We ended up putting a five mile radius ring. We ended up doing a 10, we ended up doing a 15. And we've always been focused on heading west because that was the last direction of travel. And part of that was that she's from Aurora up here and she kept making these turns and she kept getting further and further away from home that even though she was seen four times right here in the Giltner area, somehow she ended up down here at one o'clock in the morning, 1.20 in the morning, 1.39 in the morning was the last that she was seen with that direction of travel. But now that we've been searching for six days already, what is it that we are missing? Well, I think that what we missed is that I think that she came down Highway 34. I think that she saw the sign right here that said Juniata, make a right. And that, that right there is when it triggered it for her and she said, I am 100% heading in the direct, wrong direction. I'm going west instead of east. She sticks to, dirt, or to uh, paved roads mostly that we know of. And so she makes a right. She goes up to Juniata. Juniata, it tees right here. She has to make a decision to go left or right. And it's, even though it says 14th Street here, it turns back into 12th here that I'll show you. And so we have covered everything to the left here, up to Prosser, up to the Platte River, up to 80, even all the way up to 30. And we've not found her in this entire area that we searched on day one, day two, day three. So what if she turned, she made her right, she went on 12th Street, she stayed on 12th Street all the way through Hastings. She makes it to the east side of Hastings and gets lost in this quadrant again. And now we have 53 ponds and locations in this entire quadrant between the 281, between the 14. I even went a, a block or a big section past Highway 14 for any additional ponds. And right now, my most probable locations are going to be right here on 12th. We have one, two, and this one right here, I'm really interested in because the paved road dead ends, not at this intersection, but the paved road dead ends just past it. So she's on that dirt road, realizes, oh, it turns into a dirt road. She stays on it for a little bit before she has to make another decision. Does she go left? or does she go right? And if she goes right, this road comes down and it dead ends directly into a pond right here. Very tight, very difficult to get turned around. My most probable location, we're gonna head there next. Now it automatically turns like, oh, Robert. We went the wrong way again, but I know that if I just keep if I just keep going this way, I know that I'm going to make it to 14 and Aurora is over here. I know where I'm at now, Robert. We're going to be home soon. Just one more block. Oh, the train tracks. But it's okay. We still know where we're going. Bumper. Well, let's take a look at it, see if it's blue, just in case you got in an accident right here again. Yeah. I think that's off of a, uh, more of an SUV. Well, that's like what a, we, we have an SUV. Tahoe or something. Looking for a part number. It, it has a... Yeah, it's not big like this one. But it has a yellow, like the yellow fe uh, uh, flashers or the um, fender flare on it. Right. All right, this one is way up. You would have to have a four by four maximum. Even a four by four, you're not going to get up there. Nope. That one's big. That's like 15, 20 feet up. So no go on that one. So she's now been on a dirt road for two blocks. She says, all right, I need to head back to one. She knows that these factories are on one. Again, these are just all scenarios going in my head as though I'm in her shoes. 
don't don't cross the tracks Veda you cross the tracks you now went the wrong way you have to stay on this side of the tracks just go down here and turn around you can turn around down here sees the hole right there yep that's where I'm going it just dead in right into it oh yeah she's getting hung up on those rocks it's not getting through there yeah what we're looking for is any indentation for tire tracks, or we're also looking for, if you were to drive down here, it's gonna smash it down. I mean, that was barely any pressure. It's gonna be smashing it down, or because it's winter time, it's going to break it and it's not standing back up. So it's gonna be very apparent and very evident. See the tire tracks here? Now this is just for the farmer that's going to the uh, pump here, but it's going to be, that was a one time of a vehicle coming in. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's quite a distance. You're going to see something there. Yeah. I'm not totally convinced on the dirt road, but in our sight uh, that it's we're, st long, we're still on we're still on 12th also i know i know I just it's a long dirt road she knows if she just goes this way she'll run into a dirt road again she hopes i'm hoping she's hoping hopeful okay no go nope empty I mean, drying up, I can tell. First one to come in here. Oh, bone dry. Empty, no car. Tracks turn right here. You have fences down over here. Fences up, fences up, fences down. Tracks over here. Well, you had a fire here. Whew. They, they dumped that shit in there. Yeah, look, it's just pouring in there. But none of the um, bushes are down there. Look, it's just bubbling there. Look, just yummy. Entire lagoon full of poo. Yeah, no, nothing's bent over there, Bill. No, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> For you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Holy shit. Literally. <laughs> and she couldn't make it through this pile right here. That's just this section that we just cleared. Whereabouts are you? Oh, we are traveling the dirt roads um, to the east of Highway 14, going north and south. Good. We haven't found anything that uh, indicates any type of an accident or anything that went off the road into any of the bodies of water. Yeah, we haven't found anything either. We probably covered a good 25 so far and we have at least another 25 to 30 in that grid to us 
uh, check. We're hoping to have that done in the next uh, two to three hours. Okay, that sounds good. So, all right, sounds good. Yeah, we'll uh, keep keep in touch and let you know if we find anything. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep riding these going east, and we'll let you know if we see anything. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Lacey. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. Last night, we were both very energetic, ecstatic about day seven, going into it this morning. So much so that we couldn't even sleep last night that we skipped breakfast. And we got up at 6.15. We got started before the sun even came up. And then for us to cover 60 plus bodies of water just now in five and a half hours. Where would you like me to go? Well, we're currently right standing in front of the the largest feedlot that is on Route 6. And if they thought that they're going the wrong direction and they went in there to, I don't know, to turn around or again. It's a, I mean, it's an expanse of property. It's got to be a thousand acres. No, to your left are all these bunkers and holes. So they are, they're military bunkers. And these are the feedlots with these ponds. And there's hundreds and hundreds of them. Every single bunker all the way down has, a, has one in between it. That's incredible. It really is. Dude, what would bring them in here? I mean, I'm not saying they didn't make it in here. I know. It's... Like we've not found them yet. Uh, let's go put the sonar ball and see how deep one of them is. Right? Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. So you know? No. Nope. Because, yeah, because they're all going to be the same depth, right? Yep. Every one of them. All right, we're connected. Oh. Dude, watch that thing. So whatever's in there, just it just eats the line and the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Look, see, it's so nasty, it's not even going to read. It says 142 feet. Let me just give it a little bit. No, it won't read through that crap. The sonar ball is not working in there. It's so thick. 159 feet. <laughs> <laughs> it won't read through the crap. Let me do it again. Yeah, I mean, you can try. I mean, how is it coming into 159 feet, though, if it can't read through the crap? That's what I'm saying. It, oh. It's really confused as to what's going on out there. Oh, yeah, it's not going to read it. <laughs> Sonar's not going to work in there. You're going to have to just take the boat out there <laughs> and a long pole and see how deep it is. I think what we should do is put a GoPro in and see if we see anything. You're not. <laughs> Look, did you see that? Look what it just drug across. Like it changes colors. Oh, yeah. I'm out. There's that many of them. We're in that little triangle right there. And they go back and forth, bunker to bunker. I'm going to say they're really shallow. Like, I keep seeing weeds sticking out of them. No. No, see, this is what they're like. About, like that. That one. They're all like this. See how shallow they are? See how the weeds are sticking up? They've been like that on all of them. So they're not deep enough to hide a car. Where else would you like to go? Uh, you can get out of here. I just want to make sure that you've got this horrible place that is right off Route 6, which is the road that they took twice. Yeah. I mean, based upon seeing that one almost empty, seeing the sticks hanging out in this one, I'm going to say they're all that same depth because they have the same amount of dirt out of each one of them. If they took a right-hand turn because they thought they went too far, they would put them in this section over in here. Into this mess. Into that mess of house, housing subdivisions with 20 ponds. If they went in here for directions, potential and possibility that they could be here. So this over here goes along the road, which would be of interest. So 
So Lacey, it looks like really just the spot on the other side, which it had the cable and then this potential as far as this neighborhood goes. Okay. And then I think that with the warm weather the last couple of days, you know, I think that one body of water's really been weighing on both of us. The one where the ice was kind of like, it, it wasn't a natural pattern. The one where you buried your- Where I fell in, yes. <laughs> yes, that, in. yes, that one. <laughs> Five foot mark. Vehicle won't be out any further than this right here. Gets down to six feet here. What we'll do too is we'll check right along the road over here just to make sure. Oh, I guess a deeper over here too. Seven foot hole. But that is clear. Back to the pond that I fell through in the ice. When we first arrived there, you can see how an entire big swoop of ice looked like it had been plowed through and then it refroze. And I've never seen anything like that before on a body of water, which in my mind, something is just like disrupting me it. that says, I need to go back there. I need to double check that because it does not make sense something had to disturb the ice there. What was big enough to disturb the ice 40, 50 feet out in a swath that was 20 feet wide as well? I don't have the answer. on our left. Okay, let's double check it. But they are checking cameras out there right now. I think the police are on it. Oh my gosh. So February 3rd? February 3rd. They were seen by what? By Walmart? A wall by the interstate. Here and is Walmart here. out by the interstate? They were seen heading out of town on the main road towards the interstate. Okay. Like a couple blocks like I said, when the guy said he went over the top to go east on the interstate, they did not come over the top, so they almost had to turn and go west on the interstate. And he caught him at a stop sign. And he said it was a great a white-haired old lady. And yeah, I, I'm just thinking that this has got to be them because of the 1030 license plate and scrape on that fender. Either that or someone wanted to, uh, you know, their name on the list. Yeah, yeah, this ain't somebody that... They have been, so hopefully we find something out. They, they, they've been on it this just before noon, he said. Okay. Or he didn't call me, and he said as soon as he gets verification of any camera footage, he will call me right back. Oh, my goodness. That's okay. crazy. I will call you first. All right. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Love, love you. you. Bye. And, I mean, if they've they seen that scratch, that scratch is a pretty good sign. Yeah. So they were con like confirmed on camera? Or uh, no, so no, not on camera. on camera. There was a rancher. He said that he literally had to go up on the median at one point because my grandparents were so close to them. And he came up to like a stop sign and looked over and he said it was a white haired old, old lady and an old man next to him. And he said, no, it was a vehicle that we're describing. And he said that there was a big, a big scratch on the front fender, which there is from her and hitting he that noticed, flagpole at that house that outside of Gilmer. No, that was that was actually at the senior center she did about a week before they went missing. She okay. hit that, she got that scratch. The other one would be on the back fender. But he did say that he noticed that the camera, or that the license plate was number 1030, but he didn't know what notice what state it was. So this very well could be. Right. How can they have not have been seen by somebody else though within all that time? They've been gone since January 11th. How haven't somebody within that amount of time been like, I seen them driving or... Grandma doesn't, like she's either check or cash. And I would not be surprised if she doesn't carry like a thousand dollars or more on her. Cause think think about when you go to Sam's Club, you spend three, $400 there. Oh yeah. 
much. You know, we've thought and that, you know that, that they, she could easily and you know have. That they stock up on everything when they do. Yeah, we've thought that she could easily have. It's not like you buy one dollars swiffer more. mop. Like they buy like three or four. Well, the cops have been investigating that since about noon today. Yeah, so what's going on with that? They're looking for camera footage right now as we speak, but this guy said he even noticed the scratch on the front fender. He did notice that the plate was number 1030, but he couldn't tell what state it was right. because of the military issued plate probably. But they're they're looking right now. So what, what's your... She went west. Yeah. So that means if that's the case, What's she, your thought on where... I she's mean, been we, sleeping. Where has she been yeah. going? Right, right. How much that is, was February 2nd, they said, right? So may, how about this? How about look in Lexington at the hospital first, just in case Dad, if Grandpa was in the hospital. That, but they would have called. How much does she normally carry in her billfold? She could have $1,000 or That's more. That's what we're talking about. I honestly would not be surprised. So she's old school. She, I mean, she goes to the bank you know, deposits everything. She writes it all down. But she, she only writes very, checks for bills. Otherwise, yeah. she carries cash for groceries. And if you think about it, when you go to Sam's Club, you spend, you know, three, four hundred dollars when you make a trip there as a grown adult. And like Easily. Grandma, when she goes there, she doesn't buy like one thing of Swiffer Mops. She's buying like three or four of them. You know, you go over to their house, like it's They're stacked in up. their closet. Right. Like they got two boxes of whatever. Does Grandma, I mean, would she be sleeping in her car no, for three weeks? Or would she be getting in a hotel? I don't think she would, but then again, like uh, Dr. Vettel says, if she has a UTI or something like that, mm -hmm. I guess that completely will make you just like out of your mind and yeah. not even realize who you are or where you're at or anything. Right. Yeah, we told him and my that. friend Ashley had told me about that, that that mm -hmm. literally happened to her grandma. And then my friend Sarah Schmidt, uh, her, and this is like a few months ago, cause her grandma just moved back from Florida and her grandma went out walking in the middle of the night in Aurora and was just like walking around and then went to somebody's house and was like, I'm lost. You know, I'm trying to find my way home. Right. And they're like, where do you live at? And she's like, well, I, I'm from Florida. I live in Florida, even though she's down here. And then that's when they're like, do you have family here? And she's like, well, Mary Donnell. And they're like, they knew her, so they contacted her. But she was out just walking around for hours in the middle of the night. Yeah. And this is Aurora. When, like we were talking the other day too, you know, I mean, they're at the gas station for 20 minutes, just sitting there as a couple right. on a date he's using the restroom and they're grabbing a cokes you and know that's where i was wondering if like okay so did they either ask somebody outside or in her yeah, mind did she think said. no i'm heading the right way so let's just stop we'll grab something to eat we'll continue on this way we'll run into mm -hmm. aurora it's just i don't know i just don't understand it right yeah because maybe she had some relief at that point knowing like okay we're at a gas station we can go to the bathroom that, we can get some food we can get some drinks but now here we are three weeks later yeah here we are six weeks here, but three yeah. weeks ago, yeah. February she went 2nd. West, if that's the case of Lexington, she went west again. Yeah, and where, Lexington where is another, what, 30 going? miles, 30, going? 40 miles from here. West. Yeah. So is she in Colorado? Right. So. And I couldn't find anything found missing, you know, elderly couple in Aurora or anything like that. You know, when you look on Google to see if there's, you know, unknown unknown, you know, you know, elderly couple missing. They don't see it. All it comes up is the current situation, which is can't find them. Right. So I think that, you know, what we have left is uh, Kate and I, we're actually going to stay one extra day. You know, we were going to jump uh, and head home tomorrow. I think that we need to be up uh, Grand Island just a little bit more on the north side of 80 there and see if there's, I know that you guys you know, drove around and took a look at some of yeah. them, but I think that I wanna stay just for my own peace of mind in this and you know, making sure that I'm giving you, you know, my all on it, that okay. is there anything else that I'm missing? And you know, I'm gonna beat that map tonight and see what I can do to find that out. And we started our morning really early this morning. So we've got, he's completely out of laundry. So <laughs> we're gonna, get back to town and get some laundry done. Down and, to sweatpants. Oh, shoot. Yeah, try <laughs> to get. You come to my house. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then we're gonna hop, like I said, we're gonna hop on, beat the, beat the uh, mapping again tonight. And I mean, I didn't think we'd have 60 locations today and we knocked every single one of them out. So, and there was just okay, so no. Just been amazing. Yeah. Like the fact that you even came out here. Yeah. Yeah, and my biggest fear always is, you know, this is that they're gonna be found in a place that I was. That's the scariest thing for me. And I don't, I don't wanna let you and your family down. So every location that I've searched and every pin that I put, you know, I'm like, Lacey, Casey, or Cass, Cassie, right? Cassie, yes. You know, 
we've done everything we can. What are we missing? Yeah. I don't think we're missing anything in this area. I think that really they've left the area, unfortunately. And, you know, we look at like a Virginia Collier. You know, three years later, she's found at the dead end road by a rabbit hunter yeah. with her car. You know, and that's, that might be what we're dealing with here is that she's no longer, like you said, the UTI. Yeah. What's going on, especially if this three weeks later sighting is legit, yeah. how did they survive that long? And how much right. cash did they actually have? And are they sleeping in the car? And maybe they are, though. Where are they or eating? Or maybe they're going to a hotel room. Yeah. I mean, you know, you never know. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's a, it's a hard one because you just don't know where they went from there. I mean, they did that, that pattern and then disappeared from that one sighting and then no one else has any any camera, you know, that's that, what that's shown them. Anymore. It's just like we lost it at that roundabout or whatever. Like we just don't, we didn't have like, you know, one more thing to follow. Yeah. Because so before it, like it was just Giltner. And then once we found out Hastings, like that was just like. So I would also ask, Pump, she's been to Pump and Pantry twice. So it seems like he uh, had three, a sandwich. Three times if this other sighting is legit yeah. prior to. So you've got now, they've been going to Pump and Pantry. So they went to Senex because it was the only thing that was open right. on on, the, on on 34. But Pump and Pantry seems the ones that they want to go to. And he's had sandwiches in the in the car. Yeah. So he's they've been picking those up along the way at Pump and Pantry. Maybe Chuck Holdridge is the next one down see if they have a sighting on their cameras from the 12th. We've checked Holdridge for Holdridge. cameras. And okay. was it, yep. is there loop two weeks? Is that what, or is that just Bosselman's? I don't remember. I, th I know Bosselman's I was only two weeks. They only looped their cameras for. The, the one we went, when we went down to McCook or right, that Blainley or whatever right before. Yeah, Bl they, Blintley or Blintley, something. They, they had it all the way back. So we were able to look at the whole screen and Some everything. Of them do okay. So. Mm -hmm. We found a bank that, still had footage, but they didn't, they didn't they find didn't anything. anything. Yeah. Hmm. Let, let's, you know, reconvene, let's reassess and figure out what, what to do next and, and come up with a plan for tomorrow yeah. and make sure we clear Grand Island and anything else that you want us to check on and, and uh, make sure we cross our T's and dot our I's and give, go everywhere we can. Seems like she's a very careful driver. She is. And yes. because she doesn't want to scratch her car because she keeps having to bring it to the auto body shop. Yeah. So, you know, it seems like she's not going very fast. So, you know, I mean, unless ice was an issue, it really comes down to maybe she just keeps on driving. You know, I don't know. I'm just like, how has there not been any more sightings? It's just. Well, it happens. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's uh, reconvene later on tonight, first thing in the morning, and we'll give one more day for you. Ooh, what's that? What's that? Ooh, what's that? Shadow. That's a car. That's right near the uh, ramp, too. All right, let's go find some size and some shape to this. So 100% positive they were here. Are you kidding me? 100% positive she said he was a walker. For whatever reason, the vehicle and the plates reminded me of something. And I told my boss yep. when they first came with me, I said, I think they came here. 